Praise God. First uh, Corinthians twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve. First Corinthians twelve. Look at verse seven. Let's read verse seven. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. For the profit of all. Amen. It's given to each one. That is any of us here. But when it is given. It's for the profit of all of us. So the spirit reveals himself through one individual. But for the purpose of building all of us. Praise God. Now. Look at verse eight, verse 9. Jump to verse 9. Because he gives to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles. Uh, we stop there. We want to look at those three today. They are called gifts of power. Gifts of power. That is faith, healing, and working of miracles. Now let me start by saying those gifts, gifts of power, are not only for some people who are called preachers. Those gifts are for all of us. Any of us can be used in any of those gifts. Amen. So don't, don't limit that to preachers. Don't say I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. So I cannot have this. All these gifts are for any of us here. As long as you are a believer. The qualification is you are saved. And spirit filled. These gifts will operate in your life. If you believe. And if you desire them. Amen. Because that's the main thing. Desire. Do you remember uh, is it chapter 14? Yeah, chapter 14 verse 1 says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Sindhi, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. That pursue good relationships with God, good relationship with your brethren, and then desire spiritual gifts. That's the qualification. So any of us can be used in these areas. Now, I want to teach this thing differently today because sometimes we talk about things like this and then we quote scriptures and examples from the Bible and most of us look at it like uh, those things happened those days. You know, especially if you have a Baptist background. The Baptist background is that the gift of the Holy Spirit ceased when the Bible was compiled and put together they say the gifts of the Holy Ghost ceased. They are liars. It is not true. It did not cease. Those gifts are for the church. And we are the church. Amen. So it's all for all of us. So many times we give those examples. But I want to teach this differently by looking at examples that are happening in our time. Praise God in our time so that we can learn. But before I give you those examples, uh, let's begin by faith. Let's look at something just briefly about faith, each one of them, Kidogo. There are two kinds of faith mentioned in the Bible. In fact, we can even say three. <laughs> we can say three. Let me say three. Because one is what is called the saving faith. The saving faith. You remember the faith that led you to salvation. You believe and you got saved. Amen. There is that faith. It's very different. But then after that, after salvation, there is a second faith. It is called the faith which is a fruit. The fruit faith. It is found in Galatians 5 verse 22. In some versions, King James Version uses the word faith. faith. Other versions use the word faithfulness. Faithfulness. That is 
is a faith that is produced as a result of a long walk with God. A relationship that grows. Have you realized that as you live with someone and you spend time together, you learn to trust them? Amen? You are building a relationship. Now, the same thing happens. As we walk with God, there is something that develops. And it is trust. Amen? And uh, confidence. And you can count that person faithful. And you also learn to be true to them. Amen? So this faith, that is what we call faith, fruit faith, is a product of walking with God. Uh, it comes as a result of time. What is developed over time. The longer you spend time with someone, you either learn how to distrust them and you walk away from them, or how to trust them, and you walk together. That's a fruit faith. It becomes stronger with time. It grows. Fruit develops with time. So this faith develops with time. Today, I am expected to believe God more than I believed him two years ago. Amen. Because I've been walking with him. I have learned him. I've trusted him. Amen. So, then when you come to the, the third one, is called the, the, the gift. Faith, which is a gift. This is very different. This one is not what you have developed. It is what the Spirit of God brings into your heart at a specific time for a specific purpose. So it has nothing to do with time or how long you have walked with God. It is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit for a specific purpose that will bring glory to God. Amen. So if you look at the book of Daniel, is it chapter 3, where you find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were being sent to the fire. They were told they are going to be burned. And they refused. And God, of course, saved them from the fire. We know the story. Now, that faith was not a gift faith. It was not the gift of faith. The faith they had, the faith that saved them from that fire, is not a gift of the Spirit that we want to talk about here. It was what is found in Galatians 5.22, faithfulness. Amen. It is something that is developed over time. And the difference is, so you will know, it, the, the, that story there will give you, will explain the difference between fruit faith and the gift faith. When they were being sent to the fire, when they were told to worship, you know they say, our God is able to save us. Amen. They said, we will not worship. We will not bow down to your God because our God is able to save us from the fire. But even if he does not save us, we will not bow down to your gods. Amen. Which means they believe God is able to save them, but he can also decide not to save them. But the position remained. We trust in him. Amen. We have believed him. It's like we have tested him. We have tried him. And we have proved that he is the only God. Amen. So it doesn't matter what comes our way. Whether we burn or not, we cannot deny him. Because we have a relationship. We know him. Amen. Now that is a faith that is developed with time. As you walk with God. That in whatever circumstances, it doesn't matter. Whether I suffer or not, I remain faithful. Because I know him. Praise God. You know, there are many of us, by the way, who we believe God and we trust God and we are true to God when things are good. But when things are bad, everything changes. We start wondering whether God is truly God. We start doubting him. Now that shows your relationship with God is not proper. There is something wrong with you. Because God cannot only be God when things are good. God is God even when he kills you. Remember the book of Job? For he slays me, yet will I trust in him. So when you have the fruit faith, nothing can change you 
from your work with God. Nothing shakes you. You have learned him, you have trusted him, you have tried him, you have tested him, you know he is God. And you cannot betray him. Amen. Amen. It is developed as a result of walking with him, trusting in him, prayer, reading the Bible, you know, that relationship with God, spending time with God, this gift, this fruit faith develops. But the gift faith is something that is released for a specific thing at a specific time because something needs to be miraculously fulfilled. A miracle is required at that time. And faith is released to fulfill it. Amen. So I will not go further in that. We will look at some examples and then we will understand better. So the fruit faith is resident in a believer. It's there. In yours, you may develop in your walk with God. So it's there, the fruit faith. But the gift is in the Holy Spirit. He manifests it when he wills. When he wants. And he can do it through anyone. Anyone. Whether you are a new believer or you are not. Or you are an old believer. <laughs> Amen. No, you understand that? <clears throat> a few years. Not a few years ago. Many years ago. Those were many years ago. I like music myself. I love music so much. So. Many years ago. I uh, think I was, we were, we were, I was born again, very serious in the Lord, but we were wandering, we were just wanderers around in Thika town, <clears throat> but still preaching. I loved music so much, but I had nothing to play music with, no player. And those days we had cassette players. This generation does not understand cassette players, you know? Just some of you don't know cassette players. Because we were 2,000 and something. You know, or uh, whichever. But those days we had some cassette playing cassette tapes using cassette players. And I used to wish I had one. But I didn't have money, I didn't have what, nothing. We were just there. You know, like who cut to evil but trusting in the Lord. Amen. Amen. One morning, that time, I was, uh, I was living in Ofafa. Those of you who know Ofafa. With a friend. We were just sharing a house and sometimes you would find six young people in that house. <laughs> Very small house. I wonder how you would leave six people in such a small house anyway. That's the, is the advantage of being young and single. <laughs> yes, people loved each other. Yeah. There were, we didn't have many Judases. I think with the time Judas is increasing. <laughs> the family of Judah increases with the time. So I was there. I woke up one morning. And something just came over me. I did not expect, I did not plan. But it just came over me and I knew something big is going to happen to me that morning. But at first I didn't know what it was. And then suddenly it started coming to me. Somehow there was just this mysterious thing in me, this mysterious feeling, I am having a cassette player. And I knew that day I am going to have a cassette player. And I'm telling you I didn't have money or anything. And nothing came into my mind like I'm going to buy one. But I knew that day I am having one. And I told one of the young men who were with there, I told him, today I am getting something. Today. And it was so strong, unshakable, nothing. Nothing would stand before me, I mean against me against what I was feeling. Nothing. I knew I'm going to have it and I knew it is going to be there. 
And somehow I knew it was not going to be in the evening. <laughs> but the faith was just there. It is there I am having, and I confessed it, I am having today. <laughs> Praise God. Just about two or three hours after that, seated in the house, a certain Muzungu friend knocked the door. <laughs> there was a Muzungu friend somehow who used to be uh, a what? These volunteer workers who came to a Christian church. He knocked the door. So when I opened, I didn't know why he came there. And he, he looked at me and he told me, Twende. <laughs> Say, where? Because I'm a Twende. He used to like saying that. Twende. So I got out, got into his car. I didn't know where he was taking me. The guy drove right into town. That time there was a shop in town. I don't remember that, the name of that shop, but it was an Indian shop. And it was only selling cassette players. <laughs> and the guy drove straight to the shop. He got out, he told me, Twende. <laughs> so I was just following him. We walked into the shop. And he looked at everything. There were many cassette players there. Then he looked at them and then he told me, choose one. <laughs> you know, I looked at him first and I wondered whether he meant what he was saying. He told me, choose one. And I looked at everything and my eyes fell on one. A good one. When I choose one, choose the best. Stop. Don't be merciful. You know, some of you are too merciful. Unambuo order food, unorder chips. Something is wrong with you. <laughs> you know? How? If you take me to a hotel, at the order food. Shauriyako. <laughs> so he told me, choose. And I'm telling you, I chose. But you know, funny enough, I didn't even know the quality or the standard of what I was choosing. But I got it. And went home with it. He told me, that one is yours. And then I remembered the faith in the morning. It just came. And I got a good one. By the way, that was the time when the, 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 the technology of, the, of auto reverse these auto reverse cassette players, a double deck. Now, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> double deck, auto reverse, both sides. I'm telling you, that thing was good. That thing was good. It was the best technology at that time, as far as players were concerned. In fact, I think I threw it away a few years ago. Nikitambo, my friend. It was a good thing. But you see, something just came that morning that I'm going to have something. And it happened. Now that is called a gift of faith released at that time for a specific thing. Amen. Some of you may have felt that. Now that did not come up come up as a result of my long walk with God. <laughs> no. It is something that was just born in my spirit. I believe with time God had seen and heard my prayers over the years about what I wanted. But that specific day, something came. Something that moved the Muzungu from where he was. Something pulled him. I don't even believe he knew why he was doing that. He was following orders. <laughs> Amen. Now, this faith is powerful enough to bring to pass the thing that you want. It does it in the spirit. Amen. And when you begin to speak it out and confess with your mouth, I am having it today, it is going to be given to you. Amen. Now, that's the faith that we say moves mountains. The faith that moves mountains. Amen. Now I'm going to give you another example. Just hold it there. We will we'll go on. We will still look at it a little bit further later. But let's look at healing. 
I told you I want to, under, to handle this differently today. Let's look at the gift of healings. Gift of healings. Now the reason why it's called healings instead of healing, healing is because the manifestations are different. But this is a gift that is released by the Holy Spirit to bring instant healing. <laughs> Miraculous healing. Not by the use of medicine or anything, but as a result of prayer. Praise God. It may be instant or it may take several days, by the way. It doesn't have to be instant. You can be uh, prayed for now for healing. And the healing takes place one week later. That is possible. Now, there is a general faith, this faith which is a fruit, which when we have, we have the power and capacity as believers to trust God for healing and we will be healed. Amen. Because of the faith we have as a result of walking with God, I can believe God's word and you believe God's word if you are sick and we pray together and you will be healed. The Bible even says if you are sick, call the elders of the church. Amen. Let them pray over you anointing with oil and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. That is there. It's general. That is given to the church. But there is a gift of healing which is unusual. You face a situation, someone is sick, they need God's touch at that time and suddenly something is released into your heart to minister healing to that person and healing will take place. Amen? Uh, I was in Jiris, well, there was a time I went to preach in Jiris High School and a young man, one of the students came to me and he told me, I want you to pray for me. So I asked him, what was the problem? He told me, one of my ears is not hearing. I only use one ear. He said, I want my ear to be healed. In fact, it was, we had a rally that day. So it, he came after the rally. So just where we were standing, uh, I think I held his hand. No, I laid my hands on him. And I commanded healing to the ear. And I left went. Now, the following term, I went back to the school, and the young man came to talk to me, and he identified himself. He said, I am the one you prayed for. I'm the one who asked for prayers because of my ear that was not hearing. And I asked him what happened, and he told me, I am healed. So he gave me the story. He told me seven days that was on a Sunday. Seven days after I prayed for him, which was the following Sunday, he decided not to attend the school Sunday service. He, he decided to go out to a church that was nearby. Then he, he told me as he was walking on the road going to that church, he heard noise, something like wind blowing, coming. And he didn't know from which side, but he heard noise, the way wind blows when it's coming. That's what he heard. And the wind that was coming was coming like a ball. And it hit the, 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 what? the, the good ear and came out through the bad. <laughs> came out through the bad ear. And he started hearing there, instant. So several months later when I went the following term, he was hearing perfectly. So it took seven days for his ear to be healed. Now, that was a gift of healing manifested at that time. Praise God. One day I walked into the hospital. I used to like doing that evangelism a lot to the sick. I would go to the hospital, just get in and pray for the sick and share with them the word of God. I did that for, for a long time. So one day I went to the hospital and I find a lady seated on the bed. No, she was lying on the bed. And as we talked, she was telling me, we just talked and she told me I have been here. In fact, she told me she had been there for some time, months, a number of months. So I asked her what was wrong and she told me both legs are not functioning. So I told her, we will pray and you will walk. 
So she sat up. I told her to sit up. She sat up and she looked at her leg. Actually, they were dangling like, you know. It's like they had no life in them, just dangling. And she looked at herself, and I remember she tapped her laps, and she asked me, do you think these legs can really work? Do you think it can really work? <laughs> I told her, you will walk again. So I laid hands on her, and I commanded the legs to walk, to receive strength. And I left. I went there the following week for my evangelism. She was not there. And then we met later. She was walking. That lady is still in Thika today. She walks around here in Thika. The legs that had no life are walking perfectly. Now, I didn't tell her, you know, let Ambegu. No. Kuna Ambegu, Sio Yako, is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. She is still here in town, and I did not try to tell her now. You know, you need to look at me as a man of God. We don't even talk much. By the way, when I see her, I just tell her, hi, hi. You don't have to make people depend on you just because you healed them. <laughs> it is the Lord. Praise God. And it worked. Now, those are things that are, mani those are manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Anytime the Spirit wants. All the Spirit is looking for is people who are available. Amen. People who are available. You will receive your healing. I remember 30, uh, it should be, is it 32 years ago? 30 years ago, I can't remember. That somebody wrote to me a message, I think this year, that reminded me that I was walking. I decided to go and preach. There was a school near UTI called St. Saviors. It's about 30 years ago. And I just fell. So I took, I used to have a small Bible, this uh, Gideon, eh? the small ones. I took it and I decided I'm not going to the service. I was not going to the service that time. I said I will go to St. Saviour's preach and then go back to the service. We were in Christian church that time. And I remembered as I was walking, going to St. Saviour's, I met with Bishop Mulandi. He was going to church that time. And he asked me, where are you going? And I told him I'm going to preach in St. Saviour's. He looked at me and he told me, go preach it. Amen? I went and preached. I can't even remember what I preached, by the way. See you what I preached. <laughs> but when I made an altar, a very little boy from one lifted up his hand to get saved. And I prayed for him got saved, and I walked away. I met that boy many years later. <laughs> many years later, after he had graduated from KU. <laughs> and the boy told me, he was wondering where I was. He used to wonder where I was. He told me that day, that day he got saved. He received instant healing because he used to have a chronic headache that had bothered him for many years. Most of the time his studies were messed up because of headache. He couldn't study. But that day we prayed and he got saved. He got instant healing. And he has never had again, he had never had again headaches. You see this time he had already graduated from KU and whatever. And by the time he was talking to me, the boy was an evangelist. Today, I think he is the secretary general, or what, were CCI churches. I don't know whether you met somebody called Kasinga. Kasinga, you know him. Yeah. That's that boy right now. He is one of the top leaders of CCI churches. So a few, uh, I, I think last month, whether it's last month or whatever, he wrote a message to me. Because we're still in touch. He wrote a message to me saying, 30 years ago, I gave my life to Jesus. And I thank God you are the vessel that God used. And he sent me money. Say amen. amen. <laughs> well, he was not sending me money because I healed him. <laughs> he was just trying to be faith grateful. Because of what the Lord had done. Amen. 
If you go to areas of Makueni and all these things, that fellow is known. His name is Kasinga. People know him as the Kasinga who loves the Lord. Ukisema Kasinga unaimbo, ule anapenda Yesu. You know, that's how Akambas talk in Makueni. Sema tu Kasinga, he is known all over. Kasinga, ule anapenda Yesu. <laughs> but he got healed. Now, that healing had nothing to do with me. It was a gift that was manifested at that time. Praise God. Are you together? You are getting that one? You know? Your sister? Mm -hmm. Who was that, Felix? Yeah, I think I, I can remember something like that. Yeah. Yeah, she's saying what happened to her sister. I, cannot, I couldn't even remember that. But many years ago, we prayed for her and she just got healed. Those gifts are in the church for the church. Amen. So you don't have to leave here, go all the way to ATG. You know ATG? You know ATG? Yeah. Uende, utoe consultation fee. Alafu ufanye nini? Kwa sababu unaona we have no power. Shauri yako. <laughs> power is present. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is present. But you know, most of the times we don't emphasize that. Eh? We just come to church and go through a religious program and go home. There is so much the Holy Spirit has for us in these gifts. And if we can only believe and be available for him, we will see the power of God. Amen. There is a lady I met who had never, she gave birth after giving birth. Ile the normal flows of women. We don't want to talk about that. Stopped. For about five years. That lady came to me and ministered to me in one area. She did not even talk to me about her problem. But just because of that ministry, deciding to be a blessing to me, she called me later, Akaniambia, a miracle has happened to me. Something that I've suffered for five years. Something has happened. A miracle has taken place. Amen. Just that. Simple step of faith. Amen. You know, those are the things that we see in the Bible and I want to tell you they are present today. Amen. It is happening in the church. But you see, we judge people according to people. <laughs> Amen. You have to start looking at people according to the spirit. Do not judge people according to the flesh. If you want God to start working through you, because these gifts are released not for you. If I have a gift of healing people, it's not for me to heal myself. I can't heal myself. No. I need another person to lay hands on me and heal me. So that there can be fellowship in the house of God. Praise God. Now you don't have to be a pastor, a preacher, a prophet or whatever for you to have a gift of healing. You only need to be a believer. And walk in love. Because you can't heal me if you hate me. You know? It's not going to work. <laughs> Praise God. That happens. How about miracles? The gift of miracles. Now, miracles means, because healing, we talk of healings, we call them miracles. Isn't it? But it's actually healing. Miracles means a divine intervention in the normal course of nature or against the normal course of nature. When God intervenes to interrupt the normal things that naturally take place, that's what you call a miracle. When things begin to go against what? Do you remember when the storm came and Jesus just speaks to the storm and it keeps quiet? Everything is calm. That's a miracle. <laughs> Amen. Are you getting that? So, uh, miracles 
when God begins to intervene in situations that otherwise, naturally, you cannot stop them. But God steps in and he stops these things. Have you ever found yourself in a situation uh, you need to get somewhere and the rain is just there and you speak to the rain. Stop. And it stops. <laughs> Did you know that is possible? To some of us who know no, 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 this cannot happen. No. <laughs> Those things are real and present. Amen. To the body of Christ. They happen. Sometimes we go for missions. I have been in missions where you wonder now what is going to happen here. And the miracle just... <laughs> you have nothing, you have no way out, whatever, no vehicles coming. I remember somewhere when we were trapped. We were trapped somewhere near Narumoro at night, around 10 p.m. No Nanikitambo. Those are... 19 what? 19? That should have been 94. <laughs> Look to your neighbor, ask them, were you born? That day? I was with a friend of mine. He's now a bishop. We were not bishops. We were just young people doing ministry anyway. So we attended <laughs> with the Manasseh. Those of you know Bishop Manasseh now. We were just whatever. Whatever, Bishop. We went to Mount Kenya for a barrio, and then we got trapped there. 10 p.m., we are at Narumoro, darkness, whatever. Prostitutes came and surrounded us uh, because they thought these people from Nairobi have money. And I tell you, we had no money. <laughs> the truth is, we had no money. So they told us we, we, there's no way we could leave Narumoro. We didn't know the area. They told us there was no way, literally no way we could leave. So there was no way for us to come back to Nairobi. And we were supposed to preach in church in Nairobi. We were planting a church in Isili that time. Isili section 3. We said, tomorrow is Sunday, we must be in church. They told us, no way. There is no hope. And we said we are going to the road. They told us the road is dangerous. It was now going to around 11 p.m. We decided to go to the road and stand there. A lorry came from nowhere. <clears throat> and they asked us, you people, what are you doing here? Where are you going? We said we are going to Nairobi. And they looked at the time and they wondered, where? What time? And it started raining, and they told us jump, iruka up on Yuma. Just came from nowhere. Can you imagine that lorry came up to Thika, flyover? Thika flyover. Because my boss, my many up to Taruka. So it was around going to 2 a.m. to Kashuka flyover. Those days it was dangerous. In those days, those days you could not go to Ngoingwa at 6 p.m. But we alighted from there and walked from there to Ofafa. No. God just did things we did not understand. Praise God. Miracles still take place today. Amen. So, without going through the normal way of teaching these things, let's hear some testimonies. Amen. I have uh, uh, two testimonies that I want us to, to listen to. Just as part of my preaching. So if you are taking notes, continue taking notes. <laughs> Amen. Is uh, Steve here? Yeah, come. Uh, I'm Stephen Mwangi from Disciples Campus. So when Cardinal asked me yesterday to come and share, I started asking myself, of all the things that I have seen God do and use me, uh, when I'm preaching, what do I share? So I made sure I highlighted a few. But even as I was coming today, God kept on reminding me. So one of them that I'm going to share, uh, this happened in 2017. And I'm glad I see Julius Kemari there, my brother there, because this is something he can relate with. There's a church, Kwapo Pilot. 
this church um, it's called Grace Bible Church. We used to go there for Keshas. And uh, one time I'm in church and I'm, and I'm looking at it during a Kesha and I see they've written, we don't believe in miracles here. We don't believe in prophecies. Like, just like the Baptist church. All the gifts of the Holy Spirit are no longer in operation. And I got very angry. Then one time they gave me an, an opportunity to preach. As I'm preaching in the Kesha, I remember the Spirit of God came so heavily on me and I started to prophesy. But what hit me was, as I'm preaching, I said, there is someone here who has a tumor on one side and God is going to heal them. And so I called for the person and the person refused to come out. I said, because God said so, wherever you are, you just receive your healing. And when I was through, the guy who had invited us there who is an elder in that church. He was the one programming and his students said, when he called, I refused to go, but I am the one with the tumor. And as he was saying healing to take place, the tumor disappeared. And this was something the whole church knew because the following week he was supposed to go for an operation to remove the tumor. But the Lord just removed it that night. That night. Praise the Lord. That, and that, I think that challenged them. Because as I was operating in the prophetic, the pastor, I remember the pastor left the church and left the wife there. So I don't know how they took it afterwards that healing took place, yet they don't believe in healings there. <laughs> and uh, I remember we are there and we are talking and I would really pray for her. Oh, this lady also... Um, she was having, uh, like the lady in the Bible, with the issue of blood. She had an issue of blood for four years. And she also had um, a perforated uterus. Her uterus had holes. And I would pray for her, and in my heart I'm like, this is beyond me, I can't do this. So there is a certain man of God in Nairobi, I knew he, God has graced him in that area. I sent her there, and the man of God told her, you see the one who sent you? Watch Amalizia Chenye Alianzia. And I was mad. I mean, you are my senior, I am sending you this lady. Why are you not doing what you're supposed to do? And I would pray for her, and the flow of blood would stop for two or three weeks. Then it would come back. Until one time, I remember, that was, last year was a time God was really speaking to me about a few things. But there is something he told me, that he is the Lord my satisfier. And I, will, I kept on writing it on my status, and I kept on saying, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the God of Stephen. I believed he wasn't just their God, he's also my. And so one time this lady, oh, did I say that she had also tried to commit suicide last year? And she had taken two packets of rat and rat poison. And I am called and I am told that your girl has taken poison. I called her and I told her that poison will turn to glucose. And she was very mad at me. How? Kwani utaki ni kufe? Told her you're not going anywhere. And as we are speaking, she is still alive today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Rat and rat ikakuwa glucose. So this kidney problem, as I was praying one evening for her, I wrote on my status again the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the God of Stephen. And she saw it. And she said, Stephen has been praying for me. God. Because you are his God, the way he has been praying for me, I, I received that healing. She didn't tell me. She texted me the following day. When she went to the hospital, and the doctors look at her and they're like, what's the problem? What are you doing here? We don't see a problem with your kidneys. Even the one which had totally failed, it had come back to life completely. Praise the Lord. I remember, I don't know, it's like God alikuwa because the last few days, when she wrote to me that message, I made sure I screenshotted it. So the last few days, I've really been going through that, and I saw it, and I was like, 
I felt encouraged in my heart. Now, my next one that I'm going to share, there are many, but these are the ones which have stood out for me so much. A few weeks ago, I went to preach. I am a high school minister. So I went to preach in a school called Computer Girls, Mangu. And I'm preaching there, and uh, the patron decides uh, every student who is sick, let them come to my office. The preacher will be there. He will be praying for the sick. I remember we left that school at 9 p.m. Because students came. There's this one girl who came. All who came were healed. But what made me laugh? A Muslim girl comes. And she, say, she says she wants to be healed. And then the Lord tells me, don't talk to her about salvation. Just minister healing. Like, this is a very good opportunity to, to talk about salvation. Then we talk, and I introduce Jesus. And I ask her, do you believe that Jesus can heal you? She tells me, uh, I believe Mohammed can heal me. I told her, no. There is only one name. In your language, you call him Isa. In my language, we call him Jesus. Now, do you believe Isa, the son of David, can heal you? She said, when he is given power by Allah. I told her, now, Allah, in your, you call him Allah, we call him God. Now, do you believe God, through Jesus, can heal you? She kept quiet and then she said, I think he can heal me. I am not sure. I told her, well, all of us are believing here. You've seen those ones being healed. Now, do you believe God can heal you? She said, yes. And I prayed for her. And instantly, because when she was coming, she was holding herself here, and she was limping. Instantly, it disappeared. You could see her jumping around there. She was so happy. And again, that was one of the things that God told me. He told me, and that sh shocked me. He told me, now you see what you're carrying? Pour it into her. Like, well, how do I do that? I mean, she's not even born again. He tells me, do that. And as I'm doing that, later on she comes and tells me, Pasi, aki asante kwa kuniombea. Mimi sijawa yombewa na mutu. Sijawa iskia vile nimesikia leo. And I knew instantly, this is what God wants. Praise the Lord. Gifts of healing, gifts of miracles, and gifts of faith. As Cardinal has said, they are for us. Not the, not, the, not the church in the Bible. They are for us. Because we are living in these times today. The same God who said, and he gave them power back then, he is still doing that today. Praise the Lord. And that healing can occur. Healing can, I may be a high school minister, that's what I was making fun with someone. I may be a high school minister, but I'm not ordained. So, just that I am called, but I am not ordained. So, I am, a, I am simply a brother like others here. And God is still doing whatever he is doing. Because it is his business to heal. It is his business to set people free. Praise the Lord. So even as I give back the mic, I'm going to ask, just position yourself. Position yourself. Wherever you are, position yourself and allow God to use you. Don't say, oh, unajua ni wachungaji wa, uh-uh. Even hearing God, we don't hear God because we are called. We hear God because we are his sheep. My sheep hear my voice, not my preachers hear my voice. I am giving this opportunity for testimony so that you can know it is for us. Any of us. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is not only for some people. <laughs> it is for all of us. Amen. One of the preachers, by the way, William Wakitambo, who did, he is known as a, a what? An, as an apostle of faith. Who did wondrous things. You know, things that were some miracles that were even crazy. Uh, 
uh, called Smith Wigglesworth. God used him a lot in the, in the gifts of him. But you see how it started with him? This fellow simply had love for God's people. He loved people. So whenever he knew preachers who were healers, eh? he knew them. So whenever he found a sick person, he would take the sick person, use his money, carry them to take them, I mean, uh, transport them to the healing preachers for healing. <clears throat> That's what he used to do. Just because loving people of loving people, wherever he found a sick person, he would tell them, I'm going to take you somewhere at his own cost. Take them somewhere for prayers, be prayed for to receive healing and all this. Until one day, one preacher told him, why are you doing this? Can't you trust God to heal them through you? <laughs> and he wondered, is that possible? So the preacher encouraged him, when you find these sick people, pray for them. Lay hands on them. The Holy Spirit is able to use you just the way he's using other preachers. And he did that and healing started. Amen. So, believe God. Just walk in love. And you see what God will be doing through you. That's why these gifts are here for us. Amen. So that God can use us to minister to one another. Amen. Let's get another testimony from uh, Pastor Mainge. Pastor Mainge. Well, I thank God for this morning. Uh, when, I was, when I was a child, there was a very specific miracle that God did. Unajo ile specific. Iyo ilifanya mungu anishok. I was with my siblings and we were at home. Our parents have already gone to, to look for unga. Na lunchtime imefika. Na hakuna unga ilibaki ya kukula lunchtime. So I, the way I was brought up, my parents were committing everything to prayer. And so I had picked that one. So I told God, uh, na kilo unajua, sindio? So I told God, I've been brought up in Makongeni. My parents walikuwa na shona nguo Madaraka Market. Na nilikuwa naenda kuwasaidia kuwasha pasi ya maka. Na, na kuna mahali tukotu naenda kumuaga jivu ya pasi ya maka. Zile madukazi ya kamilika, unaenda unamuaga jivu pale. So when I was there at home with the kids, I told God, I want to go to Madaraka Market. And I want to get in one of those unfinished shops. Mahali wanamuaga <laughs> jivu. <laughs> Ninataka hapo, nipekue kidogo, nipate shilingi ngapi? Tano. Ile ya kona saba. I was specific. And I got hold of my two sisters. They were very young. And we left. Vile tu niliambia mungu ninaenda. <laughs> Nikaingia nika wacha hapo inje. Nika ambia ningoje ni hapa ninarudi. Nika ingia. Nika kuta mahali wa memuwa gajivu. <laughs> I scooted. Mahali nililand kidole hivi. Nika move. Five shillings. Kona saba. I looked behind. To see whether this God followed me. <laughs> So hata mimi wakati wakati mwingine nakataa kuamini Mungu na shinwa nini kibaya na mimi because that was very specific. When I grew a, a little bit older and I started to go out for missions uh, I was sent for an internship uh, in Chavakali a place called Kilingili and we started preaching there. So tulikuwa tumehostiwa na mzee fulani anaitwa mzee Kaduki na alikuwa na shamba ya majani chai so one of the workers mwenye alikuwa nakuja kwa shamba ya majani chai alikuwa nafuatwa anafuata fuatwa na msichana fulani hapo mwenye alikuwa nakaa hayuko sawa so huyu mama anakuja kufanya kazi amefuatwa ameshikwa manguo na msichana hivi so we could see that but one day huyu msichana wakati walitoka kwenye majani badala aende nyumbani alikuja hapo kwenye tulikuwa tumehostiwa and she stood at the door and she is not talking wakati aliulizwa na host what do you want akasema i want the missionaries so the host akakuja akatuambia that, that's the wife eh? mama ke pastor muturi akakuja akasema unaitwa hapa nje kuna mtu anataka kuongelesha so tunaenda 
tunamuuliza unataka nini akasema nataka maombi and nothing more so when we looked at her she is not in her no more sense so i don't think we want drama here so we told her go home <laughs> we will come pray for you there so she left so the following day in the morning i told uh, uh, the brother to go na eh let us go to at least muombe huko vituko zikifanyika zifanyie kwa kwao so we went and we started praying for her so we had a very hard time cause we lazima tungemuokokesha <laughs> so tunajaribu kumwambia bwana yesu hasemi okay ataanza atakooperate but mahali ambapo uh, ana confront the spirit in her anakataa kuongea but finally she did and she akasema ombi la toba and we prayed for her and believe that god has done something for her na tuka tukamwatia pesa ya kununulia alikuwa na mtoto by the way mtoto mdogo tukamwatia pesa ya kununulia mtoto unga na tukaenda in the evening that very day the dad comes he knocks at the door anapata host wetu uh, the host anamuuliza naweza kusaidiaje anasema hapa 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 kwako kuna vijana wawili wa missionary akasema ndio wamefanya nini nataka kuwaona so we knew we are in trouble <laughs> so tukakuja tukaitwa and you see the lady was like kama kuna kitu mumefanya <laughs> so we went out there the moment we got out there the man was like eh hey, watumishi wa Mungu nyinyi ni malaika nyinyi ni kina nani so we were confused we were like eh nini kimefanyika badala tuambie kenye kimefanyika na uliza Mungu anasema nini <laughs> Mungu anasema nini Mungu aliwatokea namna gani so we were like tueleze kenye kina <laughs> unafanya because we are just missionaries we are born again we have come here to preach akasema mlikuwa kwangu leo tukasema ndio kasema leo nimeona maajabu nimefika nyumbani nimekuta nyumba yangu safi nimekuta msichana ameenda shambani amekata ndizi ametengeneza chakula yake na mtoto wamekula ameshiba wamenibakishia yangu na mimi sijawahi kuona kitu kama hiyo kwa hivyo lazima nyinyi mkuwe ni malaika mumetumwa na Mungu so we, we, we bless god for that on sunday when we were having the service we were asking for the visitors to come and testify one of very smart ladies very well dressed and looking very beautiful akasema some people from this church came and prayed for me and th- i was sick i had lost my mind and what not and hapo ndio tulishtuka hata sisi kwa sababu mule mtu tuliona huko hatujai muona tena now while we are still at the same mission uh, we went door to door witnessing tukaingia tukafika kwa boma moja tukakuta familia iko na watoto wengi na wazazi wameketi hapo so uh, people from western are very good because they respect men that pray <laughs> so when they see an opportunity for people who are going to come to and pray for them they embrace them so we were told come have your seat yes na tukasema sisi tumekuja kuhubiri kuambia habari za Yesu wakasema mm, kabla hamjahubiri habari za Yesu huku kwetu tuna shida nyingi sana watoto wetu wote ni wagonjwa wengine wako na homa wengine wako sijuna na malaria na mwingine tumefungia pale kwa sababu kukaribu kukufa ah, how do you feel asami <laughs> wajua wana, wanaona msaada wao umekuja wewe huko unataka kusikia kuna mwingi tumefungia pale afanye nini akufe so haraka haraka nikasema lete wenye wako na homa <laughs> tuanzie na hapo <laughs> lete wenye wako na malaria wakaja we prayed for them <laughs> tukitaka kusummarize <laughs> tukaambiwa <laughs> pale kaja sasa hatuwezi he hatuwezi epuka tukasema tukajijaza tukasema okay sasa tupeleke so they took us there they opened the door and the scene was just troubling ile mm. inakusumbua mind eh? the boy was seated there mata inatoka kwa mdomo uh, some sijui unazitaje some wadudu walikuwa wameanza kutembea kwa mdomo wakiingia wakitoka so it was bad for some reason we had carried some anointing oil and so tukasema hapa ni mahali ambapo unaondokea Mungu unakaa kando so i asked the brother that the near ilikuwa mebeba anointing oil leta hiyo mafuta tujipake at least tukue ready kila mtu ajipake yake kwa mkono and then nikasema this is not where you start praying healing <laughs> by thunder by fire you start by to- talking to him eh? 
So we said we're going to sing the blood of Jesus. That is what we're going to do. So we started singing the blood of Jesus. Until the atmosphere was saturated with a presence that you could feel now, <laughs> this is an atmosphere Mungu anaweza fanya kazi. So I knelt down and laid my hands on that boy. Na hiyo mafuta nikamwombea nikamwambia Mungu now come through for this boy. And I saw the boy sit down. That was instantaneous. And the first thing the boy said I'm hungry. And the parents instead of wakimbia wamleta chakula, they knelt down with tears on their faces they want to give their lives to Christ. So from so uh, so that was the that's that's the third one. Eh? Yes, God bless you. There are very many others, <laughs> but those ones uh, I remember. Sasa hii ngine heika is serious. But but ni ile kitu inakuonyesha God is closer than your breath than your breath. Hii tu hata nilikuwa tu mtoto na nime <laughs> nimepoteza fungo za nyumba na ni Sunday. Wazazi watatoka kanisani wakuje wakae nje. Mzee wangu wale <laughs> wanamjua. <laughs> is a man of eh, fire and breath. So I told God, save me from the from the trouble of my dad. <laughs> I want this padlock ifunguke. I had a key but it was not the key for that padlock. So I said in Jesus name I'm going to use this key and unlock this padlock. And my parents were atafunga nyumba imefunguka. And I'm telling you I did not guess twice. Siku nilizungusha niliingisha ikaingia nikazungusha ikafungua nikatoa nikaingia kwa nyumba. Nikaenda kwa grill ya mlango nikasema wacha nifunge. Ni pengine hii ni master key. Nijaribu kufungua tena. I am telling you mahali nilikanyera hiyo kufuri hivi. <laughs> Tuliacha kwa hiyo nyumba tukihama. <laughs> kwa sababu hakuna fungo nyingine iliyowahi fungo. <laughs> Because God is real. Some things are strange. Niwache <laughs> kifuli. Amen. God is at work. Every day, not only kwa watu wa kitambo. Today, God is at work in our midst. It's only that we don't take these things seriously. No, we, we come to church and we behave like God left kitambo. So we just left with religion and some programs that we exercise on Sunday. We need to allow God to be God in our midst. Amen. Amen. Even in small things, we still need to trust God for a miracle. Amen? So it's not only big, very big things. Well, some, some of us have been, uh, you know, we live a defeated life because we are not aware of just how much God is concerned about us. And he has given us his Holy Spirit to release this gift to work in our lives. Amen? We've seen strange things happening. Not because we are titles uh, or, uh, or what, <clears throat> or we are pastors. But things happen. And these very things can happen through you. <laughs> Amen? Yeah? Just look at yourself. God can use you. These gifts are for us. Amen? They are for us. We know they are getting abused. They are people who abuse gifts. Uh, because when gifts, by the way, when gifts begin to operate, even when you start living in sin, gifts continue. Did you know that? Yeah, they don't cease. And because you have fallen into sin, they don't cease. They just continue. And that's where deception now comes in. Because you can think you are very holy. These gifts are not working because you are holy. Or because you are better than other people. No. It is God working to build his church. <clears throat> Amen. There, there's a lady who came, I think uh, a certain woman from Ruiru. Yesterday they were here praying in one of the rooms. <clears throat> And she told me just before that, she walked into the hospital. She went to a certain hospital to see a sick person. And next to her sat a woman carrying a child. And she didn't know anything about it. And, but she felt moved to ask that woman a question about the child. And then she was told this boy, this baby is going for an operation now. We are just waiting to be called in because of something with the brain. And in, 
and suddenly she felt this strange power in her uh, that came upon her and she told the woman this baby is not going to be operated if or two of course the mother of the child did not understand what that was but she said this let this baby cannot be operated this baby is getting healed now and she prayed and I don't even know whether she knew what she was praying for because she prayed in tongues. When the time came for the, for the baby to be, to be taken to the doctor, the doctors checked again and there was nothing. And they were asking that woman, what have you done? <laughs> now, that woman is not a pastor. She is not anything. She is just a Christian. Amen. Who just felt a burden in the heart and decided to respond to it. That's what God is looking for. The gifts are for all of us. Amen. So I need to start teaching how these things work when they start working in your lives. Amen. You know, that's what I want. I want gift to start working in people's lives. Amen. That you see the power of God at work. Glory to God. Amen. You know, you know personally, God miraculously has taken me back thousands of years to meet with Abraham. <laughs> you know, I've been there. I've met with Abraham. Mimi, Mimi. Sio kwa kitabu, hiyo siku soma kwa kitabu. Years ago, back that I think happened about 15 years ago. Back to Abraham's tent. Now you could Abraham's tent. And he brought Abraham. Abraham stood there and I stood next to Abraham. I don't know who was on the left or right. And he joined our hands together. Hold hands together. <laughs> so I held hands with Abraham. I know what Abraham looks like. Where unaona tuko kitabu ile drawings. <laughs> Then he led us to the gate of the tent where Abraham was living. He was living in a tent. Led us to the opening of the door. And we stood facing east. I still remember. Facing east. Looking at the sky. And then the sky opened. And a light came from the sky. A light I do not understand. But it came like a ball. A ball of light. And it hit both of us in such a powerful way. It hit both of us and we fell. As we were holding hand, we fell on the ground. And then a voice spoke from heaven and said, I have given you one heart. I have made you of one heart. So I got out from there and uh, I knew what the Lord was saying. I am one person you wouldn't call. Unana vile watu wanaitanga pastor's dad. I didn't want that business. I think I used to be rude. <laughs> huh? Maybe I still am. But I'm not half as rude as I was. I used to be very rude. Then, this lady, she is not remember. I don't know whether you can remember. She walks in one day, she meets me and she calls me, Hey, mother. <laughs> Do you know, from the time she said that, everywhere, that's what I've been hearing. <laughs> Serious. And then I remembered what God did to Abraham. When God called Abraham, he called him a father of nations. A father of many nations. And the Lord spoke to me, I made you a father. Not just a preacher. I'm not just a preacher. God has made me a father. He did that. He himself. So my, my office, and that's why I tell people I'm not a pastor. So some people think when I say that, it means I cannot pastor. No. I'm just telling you that's not my office. <laughs> Amen. I have another office that he has given me. I don't want to tell you which one. You can discern that because you have the Holy Spirit also. Amen. But I saw that. And from there I knew my place. 
in ministry. So the Holy Spirit can show you things. Either past or in the future. Things that nobody else can show you. He can tell you things that no one else uh, knows. And that's where comes the word of knowledge. If there is one of us here. I would give you, I can give you an example. If I tell you who, Muta Mwagopa. Ostaki. But there's one of us here who told me, yeah, hey, anakuangalia hivyo, anajua shida hako ni gani. Anajua exactly what is in you. <laughs> Sasa nikiwambia ni nani saa hii, my friend. Nimearibu mambo. Nitaaribu <laughs> mambo. She will be the loneliest person in this church. So wache ni seme ni nani. <laughs> Praise God. But it's just the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now what I want to tell you is that the same Spirit is present in this church. He is very much present. Amen? And he can use you. And I pray that these gifts will be released upon us as the church. But all we need to do is walk in love. Because gifts are for ministering to others. <laughs> if you don't love people, I'm telling you, the gifts of the Holy Spirit have no place in your life. Because where will you take them? You will use them for your own glory. Now, some of us here, if God uses you right now to heal a cripple, the next thing we will see is you are a post miracle. You know? <laughs> and it doesn't work like that. God is not giving you gifts to glorify you. These things are being done for the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is for the glory of God. So when God uses you to minister to someone, give glory to God. Amen. When God uses you to give a prophecy, a prophetic word to someone, give glory to God. Amen. And the more you glorify Jesus, the more the Spirit works through you. Amen. Another thing you need to do is learn how to meditate on the Word of God. Because many times when the Holy Spirit gives command, He uses the Word. He directs you according to what is written here. That's why we meditate on the Word of God. Give yourself to that meditation every time. You will hear the Spirit speaking. Amen. So walk in, the, um, in meditation, meditating on the word of God and give yourself, lastly, give yourself to meditation and, no, not meditation, worship, worship and intercession. Give yourself to worship and intercession. Worship is just your personal time with God, just having time with God. I'm not saying worship here in church as much as we need to do that more and more in the church. But remember this, the Holy Spirit expects you to have time just to worship him. Alone. una enjoy it. Do you know if you learn to worship God alone, sometimes you can worship in sleep. When you're sleeping. In sleeping at night or during the day. But you are in worship. Have you ever woken up speaking in tongues? You know? Yani umelala na unaongea in tongues. Ukiamuka unapata you're speaking. In tongues, learn to worship. Just worship the Lord. And as you worship the Lord, learn to intercede for others. Pray for people. If you pray for people, God begins to speak to you about their situations, about what they are going through, so that you can pray more effectively. Amen? I will stop there for now, and I will pray that the Spirit of God may be poured upon us. Can we stand on our feet?